All right, so we're going to do a transmission rebuild. This is an Alpha 5 gear uh, floor shifter. And obviously I've already removed some of the bolts. There is one not holding this back together. And there is one bolt holding these two halves together. Uh, so what you want to do first is remove this back plate or this back cover. You want to throw it in third gear. Take all the bolts off. I'm going to take this one or this nut. Take all the nuts back. There are no bolts there. Take that nut off. Uh, I'm keeping all the stuff in a cup. This is the stuff I took off of the bell housing. Um, so once that's off, you want to take this nut over here off. Hold the rubber. The rubber donut is off already. Uh, this is a 32 millimeter nut. There we go. This is this also have this tab washer. Some of the other transmissions have a wa a nut that you have to um, bend part of it. It sounds weird when I say it, but it makes sense when you see it. You bend the, there's a tab on the nut that you bend. Pull this out. This is in third gear. Pull. Grab a mallet. Never uh, pry in between the surfaces. You tap on it lightly, it's gonna come apart. And now you just wiggle it until it comes off. So I can remove it just wiggling. What you can do is take these off. When you do, if and when you do, make sure you do not lose the shims and keep the sides together so you don't get them mixed up. That will matter when you reassemble it. The, the way you shim this is gonna determine where this sits. And the importance, importance of that is so that this lock actually works properly. If you shim it wrong, then you're going to be able to go from fifth to reverse without, uh, even without with this locking place, so it won't work properly. So get this off. Now this is loose. Boom! Comes back really easily. Put this back on, just so you don't lose it. And where we go? Pause it. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead. It's already closed. Oh, it is. <laughs> Right, so now we will take the last bolt off so we can take these halves apart. I obviously already removed one, two, three, four, five, six nuts with the respective bolts. This is a long bolt that goes through seven, eight, nine nuts, and this is the tank that I'm removing it. <clears throat> Alright, now taking this off to separate the <laughs> Taking the long bolt off. Okay, so before you separate these halves, you actually have to remove the fifth and reverse gear selector. We have a tab here. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Bend the tab out. This is a 12. That off. 
So you can see there's a tab, the nut, the tab washer, and then there's this uh, plate that holds it in place as well. <clears throat> uh, now that you have that off, you have to take these, this plate off, two M10 bolts, so that you can remove the shaft. Pause it. All right, so we took those off, and you gotta be careful when you remove these. There will be um, these retainers with springs and ball bearings in there. Ball bearings in there, which I don't know if you'll be able to get them on the video. But if you turn this, they will drop. So you have one per shaft. Throw all this in our cup. I'll make sure you know where things go. That's why we're doing the video, I guess. All right, now that you have that off, you can remove the fifth gear selector shaft. Fifth and reverse, maybe. All right, I'm gonna pause it. Ready? Yep. All right, so I was trying to pull this out with this in gear. There's actually some um, bearings, so to speak, in here. They look like Tic Tacs, and they prevent you from selecting more than one uh, gear at once. So everything's off. Make sure these are in, in neutral. You can pull this out. All right, this is off. is off and now you can separate the halves and I cannot stress this enough do not try to bar uh, pry on the surfaces what you should do is lightly tap and the case is will the case will come apart lot of sludge this is the mark where the, all the oil sits so you can see that the case isn't completely filled with oil when it's completely filled and this is your transmission it looks very complicated but it is actually a simple very clever design we'll go over it next all right so I'll briefly explain how this is supposed to work when it's working properly. So you have one, two, three, four, fifth gear, and the reverse is right here. This piece actually goes onto the other halfing, half of the the uh, case, and it sits between these two. It's what this is what gives you the, your reverse um, gear. Uh, so the way it works. This looks really complicated, but if you stare at it for a couple hours and start disassembling, then it starts making sense and it's really, really clever. So the way it works is this is a separate shaft from here back, all the way back. So this part of the, sh this shaft is always spinning at engine speed when the clutch is fully engaged that is when your clutch pedal is released this is spinning at the engine at the speed the engine is spinning is spinning so this is another shaft like this one so you can see this shaft actually only goes up to here so this is always spinning at the engine speed so these two are always connected so this spins at engine speed, it trans transfers all the speed or all the energy onto this shaft, which is also always spinning at whatever speed this is spinning. If you see here, I can hold this because no gear is engaged. I can rotate this freely and this is not spinning. Um, 
this though I cannot hold because it's gonna want to spin this is always connected through here and then the way you select your gear is through these uh, rings which you move forward or backwards when you use your selector and that engages uh, that locks this back shaft with the with the front shaft and determines what gear is going to spin what gear is going to make this shaft back here spin so if you want to go first gear you push that way and now it's spinning in first gear only this one is is uh, engaging on this shaft everything else is rotating freely <clears throat> freely in a sense right this is this is rotating independently of this so that's that obviously makes sense because this is much bigger it's rotating at a much slower speed than this is which is the fifth gear and a lot smaller okay um, so that was first gear all right pause it all right so continuing on explaining how that shaft works or the transmission so you're gonna have three of these pieces connected to the rear shaft this shaft here and these are gonna have as you can see slots where uh, will on the shaft will have wood rough keys so these will spin with the shaft they're locked onto the on, onto the shaft you have these which are your gear selectors that will slide onto these uh, triangle things I don't know what the name of these are so now you have these selectors which can slide back and forth they can slide in and out but they at the same time they are rotating with the shaft because this is connected to the shaft with the wood rough case so you're gonna have this rotating and at the same time you can um, push it back and forth slide it back and forth all right let's get rid of this for now <clears throat> but anyways so what you do is you have this rotating but your selector pushes it forward or brings it back and you what happens is you mesh onto this onto the gear and all that really connects are these teeth here so all you really have to do is lock it onto the shaft these teeth will lock it onto the shaft and we will allow it to rotate at whatever speed the engine is rotating now the way it works is actually a little bit more tricky because they have these that they call synchro mesh gears and these tend to go bad very easily but what these do is they synchronize the speed of the engine with the speed of the shaft and the way they do this is kind of through a, a clutch mechanism so you have these pieces down here which we'll go over when we're assembling and you have the synchro mesh gears uh, slide onto here so as you push this gear selector in you compress the synchro mesh and that starts engaging the gear and so the gear starts rotating so you don't have the most of the times you're not gonna have the grinding noise because this is gonna try to synchronize the speed of the of the engine with the speed of the gear that you're trying to engage with that said what's going to happen many times is that you are going to have well sometimes i guess you're going to have too much of a mass to move so when you look at first gear you can see how big this is and this second gear this is third gear i believe i think this is third so once you have this whole mass to move it's gonna take longer for it to start really spinning and uh, get to the speed of the engine so what happens is these tend to wear out because they while you're not m matching the speed they're grinding against each other um, might not be doing a very good job explaining this uh, this these are the dog gears is what they call it they are usually pressed onto here. This is kind of sliding in really easily. But they slide onto here. 
and these this is what is going to allow your your gear selector to mesh onto the gear that you're trying to select so what we do many times here at Redco Restorations is we uh, enlighten gears number one and two. So this one is an enlightened gear. So what really what we do is get rid of some of that material and get the gear a little lighter so it's easier to move it and it catches up to speed faster. You have less, you have less wear and tear. Um, for those gears um, and I think that's it for now we'll get to taking it apart next alright so now we're gonna get to disassembling it you can see here that this specific uh, gearbox has the bearings on this side or on the shafts some newer gearboxes have the have the bearings in here on the rear cover so I don't know if this makes any difference, but it's just the difference. So remove this. This is off. Remove this. Alright, you wanna pause that? Alright, I had to get help from my cameraman to hold the gearbox now All right, so this is off as I had said before this just slides off make sure you catch this bearing put it back in here um, take a look at how the synchro mesh looks and the dog teeth on the gear they should be pointy and the and the synchro mesh should be uh, it just shouldn't be worn by the teeth, which some a lot of times it is. This is the fourth gear, so you're probably not going to see much of that wear on this one as much as you're going to see on number on gears one and two. All right, let's let's pause it now. All right, one thing I forgot to mention is these are the same for you know we have three of these. These are all the same. Uh, the fifth gear selector. It only has synchro and dog gears for the fifth gear. There's none of that for the reverse. So one side of the fifth gear, if it has never been um, messed with, is going to be perfect, good like new. So you can use that one. You can just reverse it, get a new one for the first and second if you have a problem, or use this one on, you know, third or whatever. But there, you can mix and match them. So to take to disassemble this, first thing you want to do is take this um, retaining uh, retainer ring over here, and then this will pop out. You'll probably have to press this out, and we'll press most of the stuff out, removing whatever we have to remove on the way. So uh, let's start with that. Let's get a retainer tool. A vice grip that would be useful now you'll probably be able to secure if you do use one I would suggest you put cloth or something to protect it this shouldn't be too complicated there we go let's get in All right, you want to pause it okay so uh, just so we are clear here there is it looks like there's a ring over here it's actually part of the shaft so whatever is on this side of the shaft this would be third gear so third gear goes out this way uh, second first fifth everything else comes out this way so make sure you're aware of that when you're pressing everything out all right we're pressing this out now So we just pressed it out, this was first, um, there might be shims along the way so make sure you put the shims exactly the same position that they came off of. And then the third gear came off, in this case the bushing came off of the gear so we might have to replace it, we'll see. 
Uh, next up would be fifth gear. Okay, you can pause it. This kind of slides off easily. Let's put it back on here. All right, so are you recording it? Mm -hmm. All right, so this, apparently you don't need to press it. So this is just, just this just slides on here and comes out with the bearing. So the bearing, the gear, and the bearing inside the gear. Which this one doesn't have a, have a bushel. All right, so next, this slides off. Next, we'll be, we'll be pulling the uh, reverse gear uh, with the, this should also slide off. Right, we'll put it on the bench, it's too slippery. So this is gonna slide off, and then we'll press the, the selector uh in the reverse gear oh you're recording that already all right so this was kind of slippery there so just using a rag there we go this comes off now we'll press now we'll press uh, the selector shaft and the reverse this one only has one wood rough key which is a big wood rough key right here and is the same key for this and the reverse gear. You'll see once I pull this out. All right, pressing out the reverse gear. All right, so we just pulled the gear selector, reverse gear. Nothing more than just that. And next we'll go to the bearing. Um, sometimes, Seems like we do have, I can't tell exactly, but sometimes you have uh, shims in there. So make sure you put the shims back the way they came. Oh, you gotta, you gotta remove this wood rough key before. So remove this wood rough key and then we'll be ready to press the bearing out. Make sure you, um, if there are shims in there, you put them back the way they came out. All right, so removing this wood rough key, just tap it lightly, should come off easily or so they say all right pause it all right so we had our cameraman uh, using a mallet and this screwdriver just heading over here and there it goes so that's your wood rough key and now off to pressing the bearing off Press out the intermediate bearing. Are you recording? All right. So as we said, here's the bearing. Uh, intermediate bearing. Just make sure you're aware of how it goes. As I said before, here's a shim. So make sure you put the shim uh, the way you came. Um, and then you're gonna have the fifth gear or the first gear slide out and here's the uh, I guess you could call it bearing for the first gear over here selector for that first and second gear and then lastly we're gonna push this out and uh, the second gear is gonna come out as well all right, now we're gonna press fifth gear or uh, second gear and the selector for that. All right, our press is low on fluid, so that's why it took us a little longer. But here it is. Pressed out second gear and the selector for it, and that's that. Here's the shaft completely uh, empty of the gears. And next step is. Um, inspecting the gear, seeing whatever what needs to be replaced, and we will document we will document replacing one of the synchros. All right, so what we're gonna do here is this is second gear, this is fifth gear. We're going to swap the dog gears because second being so heavy and heavily used, it is. Um, more worn than gear fifth so we're going to swap those 
and we are going to replace the synchros with new synchros the synchros on gear one or gear two and gear one so uh i'm quickly going to show you on gear two how it goes how it how i take it apart and how it's supposed to go back together and then we are going to show gear one which is a little different and that will be it So uh, you actually want to start on this side with the tab because this tab will prevent you from opening it more. So you open it a little bit and pull it up and then that should make it a little easier. Uh, once you take the ring off, you will see what I had shown before, which is the synchro. A lot of times the synchros are worn. You can see kind of a step here. It's probably going to be really hard to show it on camera. But there's a little step which shows wear from these teeth. Uh, these semi rings, semi circle rings, and these two pieces that fit together. Uh, and that's it. Gear number one is a little different, and we'll show you once we get there. Use oh, sir. Sorry. All right, we're gonna swap these dog rings. A good idea. Uh, would be to use a paint marker and mark where they're lined up but I have noticed before and I think um, that is consistent on every gear is that the opening on the dog gear aligns with one of the openings on the on the actual gear I believe that's to uh, facilitate the oiling of those two things but I don't know if it is or it isn't I follow that as I see so if you get lost I would follow that making sure that these two openings are aligned all right okay so we're gonna when we push that out you can you're gonna place that in the in the groove for the retainer ring and press it out from there you can see that groove right there and that's where you're gonna slide it onto we're gonna use this gear puller to push the dog teeth out of the fifth gear and we're gonna do the same with the second gear. And we're going to use a new synchro for the second gear. All right, pressing out the fifth gear dog teeth. There we go. Okay, uh, this is the first gear with the retaining ring removed. You can see how the dog gear is different from the fifth gear uh, second third fourth and fifth are all the same you can see that this only has one slot over here this first gear the dog gear has two slots one slot here another slot right here uh, and it also only has one of these half rings here um, if you want to you can replace this dog gear with one that's just like um, the other ones used on the other gears in that case you would need to get um, the same the same spacer or re uh, stop I guess that is used on the other gears which is this one without without the teeth over here and another one of these and then you could just assemble it just like the other ones which we have it right here i'll show it to you so when you assemble it this is what it should look like um, within the gear and then the um, the synchro would go actually this way and uh, around everything all right uh that's that i think 
we're done with our videos a uh, couple very important reminders remember where the shims go um, one good habit to have might be to zip tie things together as you take them off so maybe you take the bearing off you know the bear the shims go this way you zip tie it together uh, you take you know fifth gear off you zip tie it together with the with the bearing that it should have and this thing so uh, a couple things that may might make it easier to assemble everything back together um, we are going to replace this synchro with a new one I think I only want to put this on we're gonna put the new synchro and then we're going to uh, put the retainer ring on it all right um, the things with the new synchros you can when you get a new synchro and you install it you're gonna see how they ex they feel like they're a little bigger than the old ones so they might feel like they're a little bigger than they should be that's actually how they should be it should be uh, tight like you should have to compress it a little bit to make it fit in there properly so there we go and now we're gonna put the retainer ring back on and start pushing everything back together <laughs> 